Okay, welcome back. We've got another video for the VF3. Now, it's not really the sort of video that I want to do because it's a video that I found out more problems. Um, when I done that gearbox rebuild, you'll remember that I mentioned the spindle bearings sounded a bit rough. Now, I thought, we'll crack on with them. We'll see how we get on. And I have machined some parts with them. Um, I'll be doing these pieces here. I've been doing some broaching, um, some bores, and then also we've done some thread milling. Now everything's pretty good, but when doing these parts, these are the first proper parts I've done, and I also, let's just go back, done these couple of sample parts, if you remember shown in the video, and the floor had a bit of a funny finish, but you look at the outside, and it was really nice. Um, so it's more like there was issues with the Z-axis in the sense of um, maybe a worn screw or bad bearings or something like that. But the spindle bearings were the ones that sounded a little bit rough. So I noticed that doing these, for example, it had to go down there and bore out, um, do this pocket. Now, when the end mill went in first off, I was using a 16 mil end mill, um, probably got it here, using this one, 16 mil end mill. Now, when it went into the bore and started roughing it out, the noise was pretty bad. It was, you know, it was, it was squealing and screaming. Now, it doesn't do that on the VF0E. Still can be a little bit noisy, as expected sometimes in alley, if you've not got great, um, like chip evacuation and the coolant's not getting right in there. I haven't got through spindle coolant or anything like that, but it just sounded a little bit rough. And also when it was drilling, something didn't sound normal when it was drilling, but let's just get on. Parts were looking okay. Finish was really good. When Once you'd done that bore and it was sort of squealing and squeaking, when you went in and done the contour, a finish pass is a beautiful finish. Now I've got some clips of that, that I'll put up here showing the, the finished bore on a part, so we just snap to that now. Some ops on these, a bit of thread milling, a little pocket in there, nothing special. But before it thread mills, So you see there that the bore is, is nicely finished. It looks good. Um, so although it sounded a bit rough, when it, when it roughed out the initial material, I thought that's good enough for me. If it's gonna do a finish like that, obviously we've done the ball bar test and we know that it's got really good um, circularity. So that's excellent. Anyway, today, drilling a few plates for some parts. I had to put some holes in a bit of material here. And randomly, when I, I don't know what I've done, because I was just using the coolant out of here and not out the um, pecal, it wasn't spraying everywhere. The door glass is pretty clean. And I could have sworn I saw the tool move. So I turned the coolant off, looked at the next hole, and lo and behold, spindle itself is going up and down. As the drill hits the material, and you've obviously got resistance as it's trying to drill through it, the spindle moved up. Um, three mil, two or three mil. Um, it might not be that much, but the spindle moves. So I recorded it, and I'm gonna show you that now. Now I've just noticed this when drilling. Have a look at this. So the drill's going, and we'll see at the very top, You've obviously got the top of the tool, you've got a gap, and then the little bit sticking down about four or five mil is the spindle, the nose of the spindle. So this bit with the dogs on it is obviously the spindle, this section between this face and here. Now have a look at this. Watch it move, I'm going to try and pick steel. Moving in 
there's actually a whole thing, a whole thing there, spindle inside the housing, cartridge is going up, going up in the air, say up in the air, going into the spindle, so there's no free load in there, look. maybe inside has come loose and the whole spindle inside the cartridge is moving up and down so I think the z-axis in the ball screw is okay the bearings are okay but that spindle definitely needs to come apart another job for the list so there's the clip of the spindle actually moving inside um, like the spindle case, the spindle housing, whatever you want to call this, the cartridge, would you call it? Um, not too sure. But, yeah, so the spindle itself is going up. Now, as far as I'm aware on the Haas spindle builds, I found a little bit of info online, and there's no preload as such um, that you can tighten. Like, some spindles have a, have a lock nut, uh, and then a secondary nut that you can lock it down and create the preload you want. It seems like the Haas spindles of this era... This is a 7,500 RPM spindle. As far as I'm aware, this spindle is exactly the same as that one. Regardless that that's got a gearbox and that hasn't, they're not direct drive, they're both belt driven. 7,500, 7,500. So I think they're the same. Um, so, yeah, it's moving up and down in the housing. Anyway, I'll show you that clip there. Um, excuse the chit chat, and I'm sending that to a friend. I only had that to go back to. So, I thought I'd turn the machine off and I'll check it. So we've got a little bit of wood here that I'm going to prop up. And obviously you can see the dogs in. See there, this is sort of like that brownie, almost like rusty water mixed with the oil that I said would come out. Now my oil's clean, so the oil that goes to it doesn't look like that. Now if I get so this bit of wood here, let me get camera on the tripod try and get it up here as best as we can focus in on that right there you go so I'm not touching it now you're gonna see it a lot better so See that dropping in and out. Uh, again, it's not taking much to move that, but no doubt, well, I know for a fact it shouldn't be moving in there, surely. Can't be meant to do that. My other machine doesn't do it. So, yeah, that's where I'm getting a bad finish from. Um, Take the camera back out of here. Apologies for such a poor quality video. Um, so yes, that's where I'm getting a bad finish from. Something is up with that spindle. I'm gonna have to have a look at it at some point because I can't do too much with it like that. There's a couple of jobs that I'm doing that it's actually leaving a good surface finish, um, but you wouldn't be facing off or anything with that sort of setup. Turn the machine off now. So yes, I'll have to have a look into it. One thing that may save me for the moment for any more expense, I bought a VF0E year 2000 a couple of weeks ago for a vector drive and some other drives. The machine had the main comm board, the motor controller board, the video board, they were all gone. Um, the machine, the vector drive was popped. I had that repaired, got that as a spare now. I've had this other one repaired, etc. So, But I've got the rest of the machine coming for spare parts. Now, it's exactly the same as this. 
7,500 RPM spindle. Now I looked at it to see maybe um, a while back to see if maybe I could fix it. And just by turning the spindle by hand, I know that doesn't show you much, like this one here, I thought it felt good. Now, there's no guarantees that that spindle is good, but if it's the same spindle as this, someone might know, I think it is, then I'm gonna strip that machine when it turns up, hopefully next week for parts anyway, I'm gonna strip everything off of it, the ball screws, the spindle, the motor, everything that can come off of it, bar the casting, and then I'm gonna scrap the casting because the machine is too, there's too many parts missing and cables and bits of pieces to repair it. Um, if the spindles are the same, I'm gonna to attempt to put power directly to the motor on the Hass. I'll put three phase power directly to the motor if I can, and I'll try and run the spindle. Now, if I can't, it's not the end of the world because this is gonna to have to be fixed at some point anyway, but all being well, if the spindle seems okay in that one, and it doesn't slop around like this one, I will take it out of that one, I will drop this one out, and I will put it in here to get me up and running quickly. Then in my own leisure, and where money allows, because everybody knows spindle rebuilds, if you send them off, are very expensive. Hass spindle exchange is very expensive. Um, I will open this and look at this at a later date. So that's the, that's the video for now. We've got spindle issues, but we've potentially got a way to solve it on the short term, could be long term, depending what the other spindles like, if they're interchangeable, that is. So there will be updates on Hass 7,500 RPM, um, belt driven spindles and possibly rebuilds and all the info like that so yeah stay tuned you might see something in the near future like and subscribe if you like the content